sorry for waiting and um, is everybody back? Yeah, so maybe I can start now. My name is Eric or Gao Xiang. I'm a full stack engineer and today's talk will be about API logging but I will model the talk as a game. So before I start, uh, can I know anyone has played this game called Baki Oha? Anyone? Super Mario? Yeah, so something similar, but both of them are on the NES um, platform. But this is one of the hardest games in their platform. So the game looks like this. Basically, it's a um, rabbit trying to save his um, teammates. So modeling this um, about our logging. So first, I would also like to ask, how many of you are JavaScript uh, developers? Cool, quite a lot. Python? Still have some. Golang? Java? Oh, OK, so I will cover all of that later. <laughs> Ho hopefully, you can find something later uh, useful. So how about logging? So I'm trying to ask a question again. How many of you actually write log files during your application? OK, what kind of things are you logging? <laughs> Everything <laughs> or nothing. <laughs> so basically, logging is quite an um, interesting question and hard question because um, there are a lot of different types of logs, and the logging can become a uh, tracing or auditing. And um, for example, you can do a event log. Maybe in the bank, you want to do transaction log. So uh, you mo most of the time, you need to decide what are the things you want to log. And in the case of API, like for example, we are talking about web API, then you may want to log about your requests. If you're connecting database, you may want to log about um, what, what's your SQL query and also your uh, response. If any of the error happen, then your um, production team can use the log entry to help you to trace the bug. And for developers, of course, um, logging is for you to debugging as well. I think uh, during the last meetup, um, they have shown how, how to do uh, logging with uh, React Native as well. So let's start our game. So the game has uh, actually a stage selection. It has four stage, which is green, uh, green plenty, red plenty, blue and yellow. And then we will face the final boss. As I have mentioned to you, we will model our uh, talk as the stage. The first stage is JavaScript. But of course, there is no like which one is easier, which one is harder. It's just a uh, mapping. And then the right will be Python. And the um, blue one will be Golang. And then the uh, yellow one will be JVM. So for each of the top, my goal is, uh, each of the part, my goal is to create a simple uh, web application. Uh, just, re uh, just have two endpoints. One is um, receiving the request and then return a text. The second one is return an error. So it's very simple, but along the way, what we want to learn is to how to use the best practice of logging. So let's go to JavaScript first. So JavaScript, as we know, it has two parts. The first, first part will be a browser environment, like here. So basically, I can just open my uh, Chrome debugger. And then. In the console, I can just just uh, tap in anything, and then it will log for me. This is very simple because um, in the bro most of the browser, you will already have your console API, and with the console API, you can log a lot of things, not even just text can also be a picture. So this can help the uh, front-end developer. I, I'm sure it will be a good tool for front-end developer, right? And uh, another best thing is if you're using Uglyfy, and then uh, all the log information will be removed during the Uglyfy um, process. So this is very helpful. Another environment is the server environment. So nowadays, uh, most of the developer will use Node.js. And there is also a console. But if you check the difference, uh, there are some methods are missing. 
but both of them have the info error or log method which is for you to output to uh, in the uh, browser environment you will output to your console in the uh, node.js environment you will output to your standard out and most of the time you may not only want to output to your standard output you may want to output to a, let's say a file and you may want to have multiple output source uh, output uh, destination so you may want to use a framework so in this case I will choose a, a framework called vision and then let's see how does it work just a moment So um, the code is on the GitHub, and then now I'm starting a Node.js server. For most of the guys, you just run yum start. Now I'm starting a Express server. So let's try to call the two endpoint I mentioned just now. As you can see, uh, you return me a string here, which is Blicky the robot. This is one of the uh, game character inside the game, which is saved after you complete the uh, green uh, planet. There is another one, which is error. Sorry, wrong one. So it will return you error here. And uh, if you notice, the static code is 500. And let's go back to the server. As you can see here, the standard output has output two of the um, uh, logging. In this case, I'm just creating two um, information. One is ID, which is a UUID. So most of the time, you may want to have an ID for what you are logging as a reference. And later, when I describing the boss, which is the diaper, you will use the ID as a tracing point when you are doing distributed uh, logging. So now I stop the server and as you can see there is a log file and the same thing is logged to the file. So how did we achieve that? The server is very simple. Uh, most of you I think if you have done uh, Express, this is very familiar with you. But if you notice here, I have a logger, which uh, I have two transport, which is like two output destination. One is to the console, one is to the file. In this case, uh, if I'm um, getting from the green endpoint, then I will do an info log. If it's error, I will do an error log. So in this case, um, you can also use the console log, which will uh, direct to the um, standard output, but if you check back the log, uh, the information log is the original information I put in and the level of the log and together with the time span. But unfortunately, there is no um, line number here. So for me, I haven't figured out a way for JavaScript. So if anyone know, please let me know as well. So, so far so good, right? Can understand, right? So this is very simple. What we have learned, console.log is universal. You can use it on the browser, you can use it at the backend as well. So now we have saved the first character, which is a robot. Let's move on to Python. So for Python developers, you will know logging <coughs> as the standard package, right? And you really you want for this uh, package is powerful than the JavaScript one because you can do um, more formatting and uh, you have actually you have more control over it. So in this case, in this case, I create a Flask server. And then we can do the same thing. Uh, let's switch to the curve. As you can see, the same um, output has returned. This time is 
that I, which is the dark, the second character we are rescuing. So now it's the error page. Same thing, um, if you will output to the console output, there is also a file which contains the same information. So at here, uh, beside the uh, login level plus the information we have added, it also has the line information. This is very helpful for you to debug your application. The server is also very simple. Uh, if you know Flux, this will be very familiar with you as well. One thing to notice, maybe there is a log format, which will help you to define your logging for, uh, information. And another thing I have noticed is that uh, for the handler and the logger, uh, because Flux itself has the logger, you must set both of the level, or else it will not log your information to your uh, file. So now we have seen another character. What we have learned, the standard logging package is very good for Python, at least compared to JavaScript, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so Golang. Uh, just now, who was the Golang developer? <laughs> cool. So does Golang itself standard has a logging uh, framework? But it's not very useful, right? Because it doesn't have the level and it doesn't have the other useful information as the others, right? I think Google has come up with this Google Go log, right? <coughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 correct, correct. So in this case, I'm doing the same thing, but I'm choosing the Google Go long, uh, logging framework. So let's see how it goes. So the server has started as well. Let's do the same thing. Now we have saved journey, the cat, uh, the cat. This is the error. Let's go back to the console. In this in this case, the log is not redirect to the um, standard output. I'm not sure um, how the Go log uh, framework can do that. Um, because I'm just using the default information, maybe some other can help me. <laughs> so in this case, um, how the Google Go log framework does is uh, if for each level of the information, you create a file. In this case, um, both your information log and error log will go to your information uh, log file. In this case, it also has the timing and your line number and plus the additional information you want to have here. So how did we achieve that? Uh, this will be very familiar to you as well. Basically, uh, we are starting a server. We have two handlers. One is the blue handler, one is the uh, error handler. One thing to note here maybe is the golog.flush, because if you don't flush, it doesn't help you to uh, pu push your logging information to the file. So now we have see our third friend, which is the um, cat. Actually, there is a good block here. 
the guy has talked about uh, what is important to log and uh, how the Go um, logging framework has been uh, becoming better and better. So basically, the idea is logging is very important, but logging is very hard. And last, Java developers. So how many logging frameworks do you think Java has? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone still using you tell the logging? OK, so I'm not going to start a war, so I will not see who, which one is the favor favorite. So, but I think uh, I'm actually coming from uh, Java world. Uh, one of the best thing I can see from here is that the XML configuration, because for previous ones, most of the time when you want to change your logging uh, to different um, location or different level, you need to change your code. In this case, just one XML, that means I don't need to change my code. Uh, just by changing the um, configuration in the uh, logging configuration, I can change what I want to log and where I want to log to, and also the level I want to uh, start logging. But one problem I have found during my personal use is um, you can only set one file to be logged to. It's very hard for you to like have different um, level to different files. Yeah. If anyone has found a solution to that, please let me know as well. You can use abandons. Yes. Filters, uh, yes, but, but doing something like that for Yep. You can have same um, level for different files, but I want have different level for different files. Uh, I think that can be done. Yeah, the, yeah, the, should be. <laughs> the concept is that you yeah. have actually the XML level, depending yep. on the different libraries, there are different loggers. Yep. means the loggers, right? The, the filter. Uh, the yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, so for different loggers, yeah. they set different. Yeah, correct, correct. Let's come to my other uh, question, because most of the best practice is you want to have per class, per logger, right? For Java, usually I think the standard is you have a private logger equal to your new class logger, right? But like for some of the framework, they already create a default logger for you. And my personal, um, how do I say, uh, my personal uh, preference will be I will only have one logger helper class rather than each time. Maybe that's the reason I cannot find the solution. <laughs> so in this case, I choose Play Framework, the Java version, as an example. need some loading because it's just compiling. And then uh, it's the same thing. This time we save uh, really. And same thing, the 500 uh, status and the error. So at uh, here, the console also output the um, application levels. A lot. Uh, in this case, um, the Java framework it doesn't only uh, output uh, the logger level and the line number and all that. It also help you to log which track is actually using uh, uh, is actually cr uh, using in this case. So we are using logback. In this case, this will be the um, example uh, configuration. Yeah. So again, we have uh, saved another teammates. So now we have saved all of our teammates. Let's face the boss, which is um, how many of you familiar with Diaper? 
So basically, it's a distributed logging framework from Google. Actually, it's a paper. The link is downstairs here. Uh, this is one of the picture from uh, the uh, paper. The key idea is um, just now when we are doing logging, we are actually logging from one system. But a lot of time, like nowadays, you are talking about microservices. You will have multiple uh, sub uh, applications, and there will be dependency um, from one application to another application. So how do you find um, the linkage between when you are doing a REST call from one application to another one? So one of the solutions they have come out is with the uh, Dapper. Um, the key idea will be I'm not really a, a good paper explainer, but the key idea is uh, you will have a root span or tree. Basically, you model the whole thing as a, a tree. And then uh, each time you create a new request, you will have a tracing ID. And then you will append the ID, the information as the metadata to the next request, so that the next request also have the information. And then uh, as a UI, from the UI point of view, you will view something like this, which means your whole, this may be your whole request. And then one of the small bar will be your uh, another small sub a request to another system. So in this case, you will have a lot of information to linkage where you have field, which system has field, rather than uh, debugging on each individual information, e each individual system. So this is very helpful. And uh, because Stepper is from Google, it's not open source. A lot of people are doing open source uh, based on the paper. So um, one of the uh, mo one is from Twitter. It's called Zempin. And I think uh, nowadays most of people will use this open tracing. So I will do a simple example of uh, open tracing. So um, the example is not written by me, but the idea is that we have a web application. Actually, it has uh, three endpoints. The first endpoint is the entry point, and then it will call um, one more, uh, another URL on the same server. But because it's um, just as a simulation, you can assume this one is calling from an, to another system as well. So uh, I will just show you the demo first. So basically, the <coughs> open tracing actually has three main uh, components. The first one is Zapper, which is the receiver of all your uh, logging information. And this is App Dash, which is for uh, UI display because you want to know, uh, like just now, the fancy uh, UI you want to see. And then for your code, you will need to add some um, uh, code to add the span and the tracing ID. So let's see. This is an example app. Basically, when you click this, it's trying to call uh, another uh, endpoint, and then you will try to call another endpoint. So the result will be. Wait, oh, sorry. Real trees. So this is the trees. So basically, as you can see, just now uh, it's calling dash home, and dash home it will call um, service, and then service will call async uh, endpoint. In this case. Uh, home is the root, and the service is actually waiting. Uh, the home is waiting for service to finish. But service will call async, but async, it doesn't wait until async finish. So in this case, um, it's a hierarchy of uh, home is the parent of service. Service is parent of async, but async doesn't 
uh, uh, the service doesn't need to wait until async finish. So this, but now this is only one application. You can imagine if it's in a distributed um, system, this can be very useful for you. Yeah. So that will be the open tracing, which is quite easy to set up as well. You just need it has support for uh, many uh, languages. Let me open the. It had support for at least um, all the languages I have mentioned just now. Go, JavaScript, Java, Python, Object C, and C++. So this will be a good uh, use case for you if you are building a microservice uh, application. So that will be the end of my talk. Um, any questions? <coughs> At least we beat the boss, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. So how does uh, open tracing is compared to open ZK or other trace or other distributed tracing methods? Yeah, sure. Uh, the question is how is open tracing compared to other uh, the other uh, framework I mentioned now, if you no notice here, actually open tracing is using Zampin, which is the other one I mentioned the tw from Twitter. Because Zampin is actually, you can see as a database or backend of the whole <coughs> part. The open tracing is a whole framework which contains of this, and together with just now the UI, which is called App Dash, uh, yeah, and plus the uh, SDK or libraries you will use in your application. Yeah. Any other questions? Or anyone want to <laughs> write another uh, language? Yeah, sure. So in your opinion, which language is the easiest to do logging and tracing? Um, that will be a tough question. <laughs> um, I, I'm like just now I have shared for single uh, system because I'm coming from the Java world and the XML logging is quite um, I would say quite um, standard and quite useful because you don't need to change code that is one of the best things you want to do yeah so I will say maybe Java logging and it has a lot of options for you to choose from as well yeah So if there is no more question, I think that's the end of the day. Uh, there are some links. I will share the links and my code on the GitHub as well later after the, so this, this will be the GitHub link. So <coughs> and finally, today there is only one speaker and that's the end. So we are still looking for speakers, but uh, given the situation, we might want to consider uh, host the meetup as like two months, uh, every two months rather than every month, and, uh, until we get an enough speakers. So that, yeah. So if you want to speak, please send me an email um, or send me a meetup message. And again, uh, thanks for DBS for providing food and venue for us. Yeah. So that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.